Testing one, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three. I'm going to show you who I am. That's me, man. <clears throat> I feel it in, in my head, you know. Now I'm thinking about, um, you know, if one day she'll ever see this. At 7.30 a.m., the housing manager of the apartment complex smelt a foul stench emanating from apartment A. They also saw something seeping down the sides of the walls under the apartment. Sue Courtney, a crime scene investigator, was called to the scene. She immediately called for backup. As officers entered the apartment, they were met with a disturbing scene. The badly decomposing body of a man was slumped on the floor. His face had been painted. As Sue Courtney entered the apartment, she began to take photographs of the scene. Due to the state of decomposition, it was clear that he had been dead for several days, dying from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. His cause of death was not immediately released by the Broward Medical Examiner's Office due to the pending investigation. A video camera was set up, pointing in his direction, with the same paint on the eyepiece. There was writing on the walls, and one part that read, The Best of Me. Also in the apartment was a collection of videotapes. The police began to trawl through them. Items and mess were strewn all over the apartment. The tape in the video recorder was titled, Last Day. Officers wound the tape back to the beginning and would soon realise that they were in a race against time to stop a murder plot from being carried out. On the 14th of January 1975, Ricardo Lopez was born in Uruguay. The youngest of three children, he had two older brothers who were much older than him. His family would later move to Georgia in the United States. He was adored by his mother, who had given birth to him when she was nearly 40. He would later say that she had a special attachment to him. According to family members, Lopez was an introverted person, but did have good relationships with them. He had Kleinfelter syndrome, a chromosomal disorder characterised by symptoms including hypogonadism and issues with fertility. He also had gynecomastia, which causes the breast tissue to become large, something he would become extremely unhappy and insecure about. His friendship circle was small, and he had no female friends or romantic relationships with women. He was socially awkward, and had often felt that he wasn't good enough. These feelings of being inferior carried on as he got older. He abandoned plans to become an artist. He was worried he wouldn't get into art school, and so decided against the idea altogether. He worked on and off in a pest control business run by his brother in order to earn some money. By the time he was 17 years old, he was a recluse. He became obsessed with celebrities as a means of escape. A diary he would later write would refer to a crush he had developed on actress Gina Davis after watching her in Thelma and Louise saying at one point 
he had watched him more times than Hinckley had watched Taxi Driver. This referred to John Hinckley Jr., who had become obsessed with actress Jodie Foster after seeing her performance in Taxi Driver. In an alleged bid to gain her attention, on the 30th of March 1981, at 2.27pm, John Hinckley Jr. shot President Ronald Reagan in a failed assassination attempt. Ricardo Lopez's interest in Gina Davis would soon evaporate after he learned that she was in a relationship. In 1993, when he was 18 years old, Lopez's life would change forever. What would begin as what he referred to as a muse would soon turn into a deadly obsession. Like I have all my taped library uh, to see who I really am, you know. Who I really was. You know, maybe she's curious, maybe she'll have a, an interest in me. The music video for a song, Human Behaviour, was playing on the television. Lopez became transfixed by the face of the brunette singer. The song was from the album Debut by Icelandic sensation Björk. He began to find as much information on her as he could and would fill his apartment with posters of her. He found her address through a celebrity service where one could pay money in exchange for information. He sent various letters to Björk and knew all the details of her life and career. His diary would refer to him feeling ignored as the days passed without a response from Björk. If she had just written back just once, I would have been happy, he wrote. He kept a diary during this time. In his diary, he spoke of wanting to go back in time so he could be friends with her when she was a child, saying his fixation with her resulted in feelings of euphoria. However, his infatuation with her was not a sexual one. He would write in his diary, I couldn't have sex with Bjork because I love her. His diary would provide further insight into his state of mind as his stalking of Bjork took over his life. It would be over 800 pages, with references being made to murder, suicide, and him being inadequate. He would write about his issues with his body and how he looked, coupled with him not finding a girlfriend and his fixation with Bjork. In 1996, Lopez read an article about Bjork in Entertainment Weekly, saying she was now in a relationship with the music star Goldie. Lopez was living by himself in Florida at this time, and the article would enrage him. Hello. My name is Ricardo Lopez. As a birthday gift to himself, he decided to buy a video camera. He then began to record a video diary, replacing his written one. His diary would span multiple hours, filling 11 tapes. Hello. My name is Ricardo Lopez. It is January 14th, 1996. Today is my birthday. I'm 21. Now, Yesterday, I purchased this camera. Today, I purchased the tripod. And I will begin a documentation of my life, of my art, and of my plans. Okay. Comfort is what I seek in speaking to you. Something with a, I don't know, something that makes me feel better. For a long time, I've been speaking into the mirror and being my own psychologist, sort of, whatever. <clears throat> it's a release, as many times as my art is, or would like to think that my art is. You are a camera. I am Ricardo. We are both the same now. You are a living part of my brain which is simultaneously 
perhaps doing a better job of it, remembering these events which are going to unfold. He talked about his extensive diaries he had written over the past few years. This right here says August 26th, 1993 has been the documentation. Like I like to use the word documentary, but no, I like that word better. Documentary of my life. Eight hundred and three pages, and uh, you know, it's something. It's certainly something. Before long, he talked about his dangerous fixation. Bjork has been an incredible uh, part of my mind since uh, '93. You know, since I first saw. I've uh, started with a crush, you know, and ended up with an obsession, which uh, I'm not embarrassed to admit. No, it's an obsession. It sort of have, have, has uh, calmed down times, you know. I've been okay with it. Other times it's flared up. January 2nd, I believe. I went to Borders, I purchased a magazine, a couple of magazines, and I got enthusiastic about sending for more information about her and all that stuff, you know, because I, I did for a while, then I stopped, and now again, you know, I sent, let me show you, see all these, these are, here. These are money order receipts, I sent for information, All sorts of information, where she lives, you know, again, for two different things, autograph, uh, posters, uh, uh, there's about as much information as I can get about, you know, and one of which was in the magazine, uh, Spin, where I, uh, learned to my surprise and, you know, quite happily that there was a hotline of concert dates, and lo and behold, Bjork was on there. You know, had her address and, you know. He spoke of his rage about her relationship with Goldie that he had read about. His idea of her purity had been important to him, and his sense of betrayal and disgust that she was in a relationship, and in a relationship with a black man, enraged him. He would write about what he referred to as a deliciously sadistic plan to inflict his pain on her. She's the Can you believe that? Yes. That's unacceptable. Maybe he's a nice guy, maybe he's not a nice guy. Maybe he's an opportunist. But he's a that's it. Okay. I don't give a shit about him. So be it. Whose fault is that? That's right. That's her fault. And that's uh completely unacceptable to me. And uh I'm just gonna have to kill her. She's gonna die for what she did. She's gonna die. After he had decided he was going to kill the woman whom he believed had betrayed him, he used his video diary to detail how he would do it. I'm going to send a package 
package will be sent to her when she is there in London. Plus, I know that she's not touring, she's in her house, whatever, recording, perfect. Okay, she's gonna receive the package, boom. His video showed the plans he had drawn up to murder Bjork with a hypodermic needle. Those two hypodermic needles are gonna poke her thumbs, thus introducing into her bloodstream HIV contaminated blood. I'm not gonna go to prison. I'm gonna have to kill myself. It's gonna be a tape, uh, audio cassette. Let me just show you a little picture. The extensive planning and other booby traps he intended to send her were also documented in his video diary. Lopez also spoke about his desperation to avoid being detected should his plan succeed. I have to have this so far away from me because if I'm even a suspect and have no evidence and possible, the day that they ask me in for questioning is the day I die because I will not make it through the questioning. I will break like a, like a crystal, uh, paper thing, crystal glass. I sent her artwork, strange as fog, possibly menacing artwork. Left my name, left my address, left my telephone number. You know, wanted her to write to me. That wasn't a mistake, I had to do that. But it puts me at a severe disadvantage. If it wasn't for that, there's no way in the world that they could catch me. There's no way. Even though he had never gone to one of her concerts or attempted to physically meet her, he had been keen to make contact through mail. His history of sending excessive letters to Bjork was also a subject of his video diary. This has got to be well thought of. Well, well thought of. i got to make sure I get her, not anybody else. I mean, there's not much I can do about that, but I can make it enticing enough and forbidding enough to others to keep on pressing the buttons if there's not them. Every step of the way, it will be documented. And she will pay. <clears throat> she killed me with that. She's gonna die, that's for sure. Yep, yep, and that's my goal. Kill her, scare her, traumatize her. And more than anything, know of my existence. You know, that's a good, uh, that's a good motivator make these tapes for one day for her to see. To see the real in me. Why, another reason why to kill her. Not another reason, but to enhance, I can't really explain it, good. But to get her to be so interested in me, you know, that she'll sit through 80 hours of footage to learn more about me, the band who completely changed her life and will end her life. I am the angel of death for her. His now visceral hatred of her and what he viewed as a betrayal was front and center. I want to be the biggest influence on her life, the, the, the man, person, who, the most influential, the, the most important person who changed her life more than anybody else, okay, the guy who took her life, okay. In his video diary, it documented his rapidly declining mental health and his detachment from the world around him.
The extensive planning he was undertaking to kill Bjork were all documented in his video diaries, showing his drawings and details about how he believed the FBI would track him down. Okay, what I'm going to show you is about as um, self-incriminating as it gets. So, this is me. Now I'm going to send something. Okay, I'm going to travel to New York more likely. Okay. Plant a seed of evidence. I'm going to go all the way to London. My package is not me. It's going to go to New York. From there, she's going to contact the... Uh, you read that? The New Scotland Yard. From there, they're going to de determine, first of all, that it was an American thing, so the FBI should be contacted. Okay. Now, pre lead steps. This is what I think the FBI will try to do to stop me. As Lopez continued to fall deeper into his obsession, hours upon hours of tape were recorded and more pages of notes were written. Notes about how he would avoid detection and how he thought an investigation into him would be conducted. If this fails, you know, like if she doesn't get infected, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell her that, you know, I'm gonna go after, her, you know, we finish the job and this and that, and to, you know, let her know that I'm quite capable of doing such a task. His video diaries also showed his disorganized apartment and the environment he was living in. My tape is almost up. I'm here's a sculpture which I'm creating with Bjork. This is the first tape that I'm showing it. I'm almost running out of tape, but. Um, See, I live in a practical pig stock. This is my apartment. I'm a pig. My bed, my bed is leaning up against the wall. There's my infamous uh, drawing table, book, table. The prototypes he made were also featured in his video diaries, showing the planning and forethought he was putting into his plan. He spoke about religion and how he planned to die before Armageddon occurred and again referred to his hatred of black people. Conversations he had had with his brother and his family dynamics were also mentioned. I've also mentioned to the fact of buying a gun, you know, getting a, a loaded gun, and that's when he got really scared and he even called my parents in Uruguay, called my brother in Atlanta. See, I have a very loving family, you know, unlike many people, and I really don't appreciate it that much because I guess since I have it, you know, how, you know, how, my father, my mother, you know, everybody there, they've always been there for me, but I'm just not, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm just not right. <clears throat> I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly sane, okay? I know exactly what's right and wrong. I mean, my, my mother has a love for me that, you know, <laughs> it's, It's um, it, it's it's, tr it's truly you know, bewildering. I mean, of course, every mother loves loves their uh, son, but it's you know, since I was born, the latest, you know, I was the, like the the uh, el niño de la vejez, as I say in Spanish. I was you know the child born. I mean, I was born I was born when my mother was almost forty, you know. My older brother being, you know, 39 years old, and, and my and George being uh, 30, what is he, 35? So, so, and I'm 21, so it's like a, a big age difference. And, and so it's like a, I was a child of, you know, that wasn't expected, to, you know, so she has a special attachment. Over the course of the next few months, Lopez continued to document his plan. I'm just gonna have to kill her.
When officers in apartment A were trying to piece together exactly what had happened, they watched the last tape in the recorder, called Last Day. There, on the screen, was Ricardo Lopez. The tape depicts a thick, hollowed out book, wired up with a device, appearing to be a bomb. Diagrams found in his apartment appear to be blueprints for the bomb, but the bomb is not there. The police evacuate a radius of one block around the apartment, while they try desperately to find the device. After four hours of searching, Broward Sheriff's Office Bomb and Arson Unit say that the area is safe, although they have found what they call questionable materials, the device isn't there. They don't know where the bomb is or who it's intended for, but 11 minutes into the tape, it all starts to become clear. The bomb is intended for Bjork. It is designed so that when she opens it, acid is sprayed all over her face with Lopez showing himself practicing with an unknown substance. Yes, hello, how you doing? Yes, I'm interested in purchasing some hydrochloric acid. Uh, do you guys sell that? Uh, what's the smallest container that you have of that? He would later change it to sulfuric acid after deciding that hydrochloric was not strong enough. In order to get the bomb to Bjork, he wrote a fake letter from Electra, the record company. The letter said that the parcel was an old book, being made into a film, and the director and casting director wanted her to be involved. Lopez's hope was that she would be intrigued, open the book, the bomb would go off, and spray sulfuric acid in her face. She's gonna die for what she did. In the morning, Lopez filmed his video diary. He planned to take the parcel to the post office going armed so that if anything went wrong, he would begin shooting. 10.12 a.m. Lopez sits down in front of the camera and starts to shave his head. 11.19 a.m. He begins to paint his face. 2.38 p.m. the building manager leaves. He says, I've got a gun. I just want to say my last words. The world. That's my last words. And f Bjork. At 2.46 p.m. Lopez says, I'm definitely not drunk. I'm not depressed. I know exactly what I'm doing. It's cocked back and I'm ready to roll. This debt is for you, Bjork for you to see it, and some compensation for the pain I have caused you. Everything in my life that I have fantasised about, I have accomplished. At 2.49pm, Ricardo Lopez says, This is the last song. After this, I'm dead. The tape then continues to roll, as Bjork's music plays through the apartment. Using a 38 calibre pistol, Ricardo Lopez calmly says, this is for you, takes several deep breaths, and then takes his own life. At 
After officers watch the tape, they come to a horrifying realisation. The bomb has been mailed four days ago, and it only takes five days to reach London. They have 24 hours to find the bomb, intercept it and save Bjork. Hollywood police contact the Metropolitan Police Force in London to tell them that a bomb has been sent to the UK. Bjork was in London, finalising her latest album, Homogenic, totally unaware of the threat to her life, or even of Ricardo Lopez's existence. New Scotland Yard police set up a secret mail detection system to trace and track packages. Time is running out for them to find the bomb before it gets to Bjork's house. Before long, they finally get a hit. The parcel is in South London, on its way to be delivered to Bjork. Police have never revealed how they were able to find the package, but it was intercepted, taken to a secure site and safely detonated. Her spokesman gave a statement following the detonation of the device. She said that they had reason to believe that there might be a, you know, some, some parcel sent to Björk and that they were going to screen it and not to worry because they had a system designed to deal with it. They, uh, they, they dealt with it uh, in their time-honoured way and uh, apparently acid was sprayed in all directions, so it was a very nasty device. Bjork was incredibly shaken and distressed by the incident and gave a statement in London. I just find it very sad that people get in that kind of state. I'm very upset, obviously. How have you been? Well, I'm, you know, I'm just, it's just kind of a very sad thing, you know. Must be very shocked. Well, I'm more worried about my son, you know. I'll be fine. I'm always fine. She left London and headed to Spain before returning to her home of Iceland. She also sent flowers to his family to express her sympathies. The only thing I've ever fantasised about, if anything, was just bringing her pleasure to satisfy her need. Ricardo Lopez had no previous criminal record. He had no history of violence. His family did know about his fascination with Bjork, but say they didn't know the dangerous nature of his obsession. The psychiatrist who had treated Lopez in the months before his suicide said that he did not appear to be a dangerous man. Yet he developed an insidious plot to destroy or end the life of the woman he had become infatuated with, a woman who didn't even know he existed. With the rise of social media, reality television and platforms like YouTube, we now have insight and access to people that we have never had before. Parasocial relationships means that consumers of media can come to view people in the public eye as friends, despite in most cases having never even met them. With the rise of things like vlogging and the information now available, it's easy to think that we know these people and it's easy to be drawn into their lives. It's terrifying to think that Ricardo Lopez was able to gain such information about Bjork and was so close to committing such a violent act prior to the age of social media or mainstream use of the internet as we know it today. Ricardo Lopez, thankfully, never succeeded in his plan to destroy or end Bjork's life. He was just 21 years old when he took his own life in his apartment. Thanks to the quick-thinking Hollywood police and the tenacity of New Scotland Yard, Bjork's life was saved. If that parcel had been delivered, one can only imagine the destruction and devastation it would have caused. If you have been affected by any of the issues raised in today's episode, we have left links to further resources in the description box below.